for more on those retail sales, the economy, rates, and everything else, uh, we welcome back our expert, Nicholas Economides, Professor of Economics at the School of Business, NYU, although uh, you are in San Francisco, I am told, uh, today. Uh, welcome back, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Phil. I'm happy to be here. So these retail sales, um, I was so confused because a couple months ago we were talking about how, how strapped the consumers were, I mean, how terrible things were. You had school loans, car loans, people were defaulting and people couldn't get, we had all these problems and we were supposed to have lower sales, but the sales came in, I guess, better than expected is, is the headline, but they were solid, so there's nothing to, to cry about there. What happened to the forecasting? I think that what has happened is that the consumers are running out of savings, the savings that they accumulated over COVID, and then later on with a handout from the Trump administration and the second handout from the Biden administration. They are running out of those savings. But at the same time, what we observe, and we have evidence, is that they're piling on debt. So not only they are making more credit transactions, but they're keeping uh, the debt for longer before paying it off. So I would interpret the present uh, strength of retail sales in that context. Uh, and that means that in the longer run, this is not going to be to persist, that eventually the uh, consumers are going to feel the pinch of the high interest rates in credit card debt and are going to reduce their consumption. I, I, I get that some consumers feel the pinch, and I, I don't want to use this word, but it's essentially some of the lower end consumers um, who spend probably a larger proportion of their income on, on discretionary items and on probably staple goods. But if you were to give this, this economy a grade, Professor, you know, from an A to an F, you say you're worried about the next few months, what grade would you give this economy now? Well, I would give it an A minus. I mean, the economy is doing very well. Uh, it uh, might have deficiencies a few months from now. A, a lot will depend on what the Fed does. I still hope that the Fed will cut interest rates in March, uh, but we'll see. Okay, uh, but, but at the moment, but I'll give it a very good grade. Professor, yep. if you're giving it such a good grade, why would the Fed cut rates if the economy is, is doing well and, and they're meeting all the targets they're trying to meet? We've got inflation that's come down. They seem to be happy about that. The, the jobless rate seems to be healthy. They're happy about that. You don't cut rates if the economy is doing good, do you? Yes, you do. I mean, if you have achieved the, the target for inflation or you're very close to achieving the target for inflation, there is no reason to keep the interest rate so high. I mean, the main reason the interest rates are so high was to cut inflation. Once you have achieved that, what's the point? There's no point to slow down the economy. But I thought that the reason we were raising rates because we, we wanted to control inflation. So if you were to lower rates, you'd probably speed up the economy and you would put more pressure back on the inflation, which is the one thing that you were trying to stop at least last year. Well, yes or no. I mean, if we are very close to the 2% target, and let's be truthful among us. I mean, uh, even though the target is 2%, the Fed can live with 25 So if we're very close to that number, there is no real reason to keep the interest rates very high. I agree. I think 2.5 uh, can very much uh, be acceptable for the vast majority of us. Heck, I remember when it was over 5% and we all started to, we all started to panic. So any number with a 2 sounds very good. Um, let's talk about the, the fiscal balance sheet in America. We, we have a, a growing size debt. A lot of people say that that ultimately will hurt um, the, the, not only the consumer, but also businesses, as potentially that means higher taxes, paying off the debt. Then you have the fiscal balance sheet, which, by the way, we're, we're talking about another potential, uh, I guess, partial shutdown uh, again here in the next few months. So all these, does that signal still the strong economy that you're talking about? It's a very strong economy, but at the same time, it requires fiscal discipline. Uh, what has happened in this administration uh, and in the previous one is that there was no discipline. There was money spent as if there was no tomorrow. Uh, and because of that, the Fed had to, we had inflation and the Fed had to intervene. Now, we, it was very painful 
for the Fed, uh, for uh, as a, the consequence of the Fed actions were very painful. So I hope that Congress and the president uh, will restrain themselves and uh, spend less uh, this year. Of course, this is very hard, especially this being um, an election year. So <laughs> it's difficult, but I still hope that Congress will <laughs> It, it has been a long time since I've heard uh, a president or a Congress talk about spending uh, less, but it, it is uh, hopeful thinking. Uh, Professor, always good to see you, my friend.